You probably won't believe that these aren't the trousers. That was on TripAdvisor, someone came in. Don't know what he was on about, my uh, trousers were perfectly suitable. <laughs> Tried tonight. With the cabaret loop, I think. No? <laughs> and me? I don't know, uh, see people doing it like that sometimes? Is that working? Is that okay? So, yeah, see people doing it like that? Oh no. Is that? No? no it doesn't suit me? So, <laughs> right, so this is a Roman eclef. I don't want to patronise you, I'm perfectly aware that you know what a Roman eclef is. And it's, it's French, it means a novel with a key. It's a key. And the key is a cipher system, so you can cipher things from one element to the other. You take a name and you cipher it into another name to preserve the anonymity of the guilty, for they know not what they do. But, um, being me, Chris Stewart, this is also, the, the key is a dichotomous key. Oh. Right. <laughs> now, <laughs> I don't want to patronise you, I just want to explain. <laughs> I know that you know what an explanation is, but <laughs> <laughs> you might not know what a dichotomous key is, but, but, but you're lying to yourself. I know that you, that you probably do know what a dichotomous key is, just don't know the, the word for it. Dichotomous key, it's, all this, it's, it's a taxonomy. There's another nice way to taxonomy. It's purely, it's, it's like the periodic table. That's a that, that, that's that's a taxonomy. You get you get rows of similarities and columns of of judgment and, <laughs> and association. Carl and your spinal nomenclature. Does this ring any bells? It's uh, it's classification. It's racism, basically classification of of living things. That's what it is. It's, it's pretty simple. Did, did you ever have that biology lesson? Separating bugs into two piles, or leaves, or potatoes, perhaps, um, from uh, a white potato to a King Edward, maybe. Um, six legs, insect, eight legs, arachnid, oh, that's a spider, what's this? I don't know, but how many legs has it got? Six. It's an insect, don't know what it is, but it's an insect, brilliant. That's the same thing, that's what a dichotomous key is, it's purely simple, do you get it? It's clear. So this is a dichotomous key, Roman eclef, it's a Roman eclef with a dichotomous key. <laughs> And the thing about it, so the cipher system is a dichotomy scheme, but that's brilliant because what you can do is that, you know, you don't have to cipher people's names into names. You can cipher them from, from one thing into anything, any object, any object. And the reason we do this, like I said, is preserved. I don't remember see, um, for an example, it's like, um, I've got a friend. Uh, let's uh, call him by the initial of his middle name, I. And uh, <laughs> I had, had, a, had a girlfriend, uh, let's call her... <laughs> <laughs> Let's call her J. Now, J said, I think we should play uh, role play. You can wear Reeboks and sportswear, and I'll wear a really, really short dress. And uh, we'll pretend we don't know each other in the club, and you can come up to me and treat me like a slut. And I said, <laughs> <laughs> Jay, just, when you say that to me, it makes me feel kind of uh, like I'm not good enough for you. And that you want me to be someone else and maybe it's you know, your ex-boyfriend who used to like be a chav and wear sportswear and Reeboks. So the guy, <laughs> guy that used to, he, he had a threesome with, you know, like, and he was sleeping with his best friend. Uh, actually, I mean, when you say threesome, it was more kind of like, as menage a trois go, it was like, you were the other woman, really, weren't you, on the side, but then he convinced you to, to do all that. And do you know how you said, like, that for some reason, you know, you're over him and stuff, but, like, you still want to role-play him? That's what it feels like. So that's an example of how, um, <laughs> how Roman life can preserve our liberty. <laughs> It's an, it's, a bi it's an autobiography, it's an autobiography, um, I'm just going to get on with it. So in this autobiography, this section is called a breakdown in a nightclub as a dichotomous key Roman eclef. Um, and it can be any, 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 any nightclub really, any nightclub from the ages of 17 to 32 because um, I'm not really, like, I'm emotionally retarded. And this is the kind of thing that happens when I have a little bit too much fizzy pop. Um, I've, I've got to strip off for of this, because... Uh, yeah, it's cold in here, isn't it? But, um, 
So as you can tell, I'm kind of, uh, I used to be a twink, but now I'm kind of an otter. Uh, one day maybe I'll be, I hope to be a bear. <laughs> Some people know what, what that is. So let's say, Roman Eclef, it's brilliant, it doesn't have to be names, the names can be names in anything. But stop waffling and get on with it. Now Feruza is best described by her own homemade patchwork quilt dress, which is real, which is to say it is fake. Her sternum resolutely wears the sun. Beneath the blue bib of her skyline recline the untilled fields of an azure British countryside. She smells of English hedgerow. Mole droppings. <laughs> Stort paraphernalia. <laughs> Privets. An elderflower cordial. <laughs> and I bet with that creamy white skin, she tastes like coconut milk. Or maybe it's just a little bit like a Thai massage. <laughs> I want to slough off my muddy galoshes, tamp down her weeds, burrow into her furrows and let sun rays dapper my eyelids. But I'm an ectomorph, a predominant smart type 117. You say I'm having a hard time deciphering whether you're an endomorph who's really looking after himself, a mesomorph who's let himself go, which is it? <laughs> it's a rhetorical question! <laughs> Come here next time and I'll be picking on some other pollution in the front row, sorry. No, this is a massive superimposition on your time. I'm, I'm purely waffling on so people might be able to work out that smart type is purely a body type, you know? Twink, otter, ferret, I don't know. Don't know what I call myself. Any idea what it's like to have a back like a thumbprint? <laughs> <laughs> that conglomeration of nerve ganglia to flesh. All I feel is pain. Oh. I'm an anxious sort of individual. I'm a borderline histrionic in the lingua franca of the self-assessment tests I habitually take online. I am a mood hoover, an asocial resistor drawn on the good crack of the social circuits. I am a sebaceous cyst, an oily fish. Last week's Feruza is best described by a homemade patchwork quilt dress. This week's Feruza is best described by her cheeky gothic Lolita ensemble with <gasps> obsidian knee socks. <laughs> knee socks! Last week's Feruza's knee covertly kisses mine beneath the real ale table and intentionally dropped in the guffin in a Soviet spy thriller she can deny all knowledge of. This week's Feruza's knees dancing with his <laughs> his left knee is clearly described by his right arm. A half complete Celtic braid. His arm is a coining book of cliché. He is a somato type. Uh, one, one, seven. I am a predominant somato type. One, one, seven. What's the difference? <laughs> He's clearly a Times New Roman font masquerading as an Helvetica. <laughs> Helvetica. Think bigger, do better. I mean, I know Wikipedia is no substitute for a lack of imagination, but if you're really going to put in the effort to really fucking combine yourself, at least pick something just a tad more obscure. You could be uh, Elixir readable. Or a Kabul, or a Lato, or a Hiroshiga Sands! Designed specifically to redress legibility issues with regards to dyslexia. See? A talking point, you boring. Comic Sands. <laughs> Comic Sands, I didn't see you there, Comic Sands. I'm sorry, Comic Sands. Oh, oh. oh well, fine, Comic Sands. Fine. I was only using you anyway, because I felt sorry for you. Oh, alright. <laughs> <laughs> 
All right, all right, yeah, I'm okay. I'm all right, get, yeah, get your serif off me. Get your serif. <laughs> oh, right. Yeah, yeah. You want a portion, do you? All right, P.T. Sands. P.T. Sands. Create for all the minority languages of the Russian Federation. Do you realise that your camera is a cloth, focal plane, Fed 5, range finder with a 61 LD lens, did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Did you? Or did you just buy a filmography.com with all the rest of your Soviet kitsch? Because you're all of a sudden in a Regina Spectre, that bargain basement, Joanna Newsom. <laughs> no, mate, no, no, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, Comic Sans, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. I'm not saying I'm majuscule. There's a really, 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 really clever pun coming up to do with... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We don't have time to go into it. Uh, just, just, yeah. just, just going over your head. Just the issue. It's very clever. It's really. I'm. I'm very pleased with it. But I, I can't. I can't. I can't go into it right now. Sorry. I'm not saying a majuscule. Only you are minuscule little cliches I scrabble with for my own amusement. You see, when you exist on the periphery, as I. And glimpse things off the corner. You see people's true tight faces. <laughs> now you see, I am as a heteronormative, neurotypical English, 30 something white male. I don't feel this is a safe space for me. <laughs> <laughs> I know that binaries, binaries are kind of like an illusion, you know, it's an, it's an illusion, but well, can't, can't, can't we just go back to what it used to be? Please, you, you forget that I am the meridian line that you were all derive. You're two hours ahead, you're three hours behind. Keep up! You see, I... Just call me Mr. Greenwich. I am like... Ooh, Goldilocks' porridge, just right. Can't we go back to how it was? That's why I'm just confused. Confused? I don't understand. I don't understand it. What's going on? I don't understand all these taxonomies. I will bear the burden, heroically, of advantage and privilege, just so we all have a level playing field. I'll tell you what. Do you know what used to make this Britain great? What makes Britain great? Cues. Cues and a stiff upper lip. Get behind me and shut up. Jeez. <laughs> what time am I on? Five. Five. I'm not finished, I'm just knowing if I need to go into something else. You've got five minutes. I apologise. <laughs> I have had too much to drink. Uh, my tongue has made of itself a smooth muscle, and of me an unspooled fool's cap manuscript. Good night. <laughs> Ma? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm called. I'm the sideburn poet. I'm trying to be big on on Twitter right now, so really help me out if you go onto Twitter, hit me up, sideburns poet, not burns poet. It's like past tense to scold yourself, burns, not sideburns, sideburns poet. He's some other guy who grew sideburns thinking it'd give him a marketable iconic image not realising that he'd have to keep them forever once he had his Twitter handle like that <laughs> Sideburns point is an idiot I'm the Sideburns point 
So if you could just hashtag that, hashtag Sideburn Poet if you liked it. If you didn't like it, I don't need that kind of negativity in my life. <laughs> All you do is wait. Wait at the bus stop. Waiting for the weekend, waiting for the paycheck, waiting for that promotion, waiting for that ding on the microwave. Waiting for the end. Why not cut out all that crap and throw yourself under an articulated lorry? Here's one now. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Damn! Shit, it's gonna have to be this uh, lorry. Now make sure you get under the hood, because if you bounce off the bonnet, you'll end up a cabbage patch, baby. Boom! Procrastination will be the death of me. <laughs> okay. It's just gonna have to be this cyclist. <laughs> Although it wouldn't look very good on the obituary column, would it? Given some innocent cyclist life-changing injuries. WHY DON'T YOU WEAR A HELMET, YOU INCONSIDERATE SWINE?! <laughs> so... Do you masturbate? <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sorry, is that impolite? Mm. I masturbate. Oh, oh. I masturbate big time. Why do you think I'm on the hard shoulder at 3am? And I believe that the Lord our God <laughs> created man in his own image. So what I like to do of an evening is squat with a full length mirror that is, and make God debase himself. That's how tightly <laughs> Satan had me in his grasp, as tightly as I had my hard won mine. And I idolise myself. I idolised myself. <laughs> <sighs> And that's why I travel country to meet with ownness like yourselves to warn against spiritual adultery. <laughs> now, spiritual adultery, in case you don't know, and I'm looking around, I see a lot of people who need educating. <laughs> is when you place your trust in anyone other than the Lord our God, Jesus Christ. So what makes me? It's God. An expert. What does he want? We're on good terms. Let's keep up the good work, Chris. <laughs> I want to talk to you about courtship. Advantages of. Consider the beginning of the 20th century when courtship was the rule, not the exception. A much lower divorce rate. Courtship. Advantages of. Number one, no date rape. Number two, inter-family relationships with in-laws will be much improved. Number three, no STI sexually transmitted infections if both man and woman are virgins before they caught and marry. Number four. Courtship allows any man or woman to fulfill her promise to God. So, if you want to hear more about that story, and it's a long story. <laughs> It goes way, way, way back into, into my childhood where I was emotionally abused, ostracised and bullied by my peers for being morally superior to them. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard childhood. I didn't have many friends, but the ones that I did have, I wasn't very close to. <laughs> if you want to see that, you're going to have to check me out on Sideband Port to see when I'm next uh, performing. And uh, I would like to thank you. Being a beautiful audience, you should give yourselves a round of applause, and I'm going to go. Thank you very much. Yeah.